Well, I will spend a few minutes talking about NEYC, and then I want to share with you a little bit about our view at NEYC that the early years are learning years. That's what you're here for in thinking about high scope and thinking about model curricula to work with young children and their families. Well, we want to talk a little bit about quality this afternoon, and the mantra that I use about quality is that quality matters. And as my good friend Lynn Kagan likes to say, it also costs. Quality matters and quality costs. We'll talk a little bit about developmentally appropriate practice, a little bit about standards for quality. I want to mention our accreditation programs and our efforts in that regard. And then to think with you a little bit about what some of the critical and evolving issues, evolving critical issues there are in our field of early childhood education. And this is why we do it. When you see pictures of young children, when you're engaged in programs that are serving young children, you understand where the motivation comes from. It comes from the desire to help children like these be all that they can become as successful learners as they enter the school systems. You want them and you're inspired by their learning and their development and you're inspired to help them become successful both over the course of their school careers but literally over the course of their life. Well, who are we and what are we at NEYC? NEYC is the largest professional association in the world with a membership of nearly 90,000. And we're engaged in many different activities and programs focused fairly honed-wise around the concept of professional development, of trying to help early childhood educators be better at educating young children every single day in the classroom, to be better tomorrow than we even were today, knowing that we're doing a good job today. We publish and promote and develop resources for the teachers of young children. We hold conferences much like this. The next NYC conference is the first week in June, our annual professional development institute, which will take place the first week in June in Phoenix. And the 2010 NYC annual conference to be held the first week in November in Anaheim, California. We're involved in policy advocacy and policy development. We develop position statements for the field which become important resource documents for those developing policies about early childhood education and for those involved practicing early childhood education. We're engaged in accreditation and we have three different kinds of accreditation programs at NYC. The most well known, and the one that you may know NEYC for, the one that is really a signature of the organization, is our program accreditation system. NEYC accredits nearly 8,000 early childhood programs around the country, and later in the conversation this afternoon, I'll talk a little bit about that. But we also accredit programs in higher education, programs at the associate degree level, programs at the baccalaureate level, and programs at the graduate level. And our focus is on development. Our focus is on development and learning. We know that there's an achievement gap. The achievement gap is really, in my view, a gap about readiness. A gap about how do we help our children to start well, and how do we help them to continue well in their education, and how do we help them to develop well over the course of their life. A well-known book about four or five year, years ago was published by the Economic Policy Institute which talked about inequality at the starting gate. That talked about this notion of the readiness gap that exists, particularly for children who aren't from advantage. And what we know is that that gap widens for these children, particularly for African American and Latina children from lower SES communities, for economically disadvantaged children more generally, and for children who come from families for which there is low parental education. One of the anecdotes for this readiness gap is high quality early childhood education. The research tells us and the research demonstrates that high quality early childhood education can narrow that readiness gap, could bridge that readiness gap. And high quality early childhood education is shown to be not just important and successful in the short term, but in the long run. And I credit my, my colleague and good friend Larry Schweinhardt and all the folks at HighScope who've done the pioneering research to show us that over 40 years and more, a 50 year study now in, in analysis, 50 years of data on children that participated in the Perry Preschool, the Perry Preschool just literally a few miles from here, to show that the benefits of a high quality early education, children who went through a curriculum like HighScope, in fact children who went through the HighScope curriculum itself, have been shown to benefit over the course of their entire life. In the short term, we find things like higher rates of high school graduation. 
We find that there's less usage of special education. We find that there are positive employment trends and increased earnings for children who participate in a high quality early childhood education based upon a high quality model of education like the high school curriculum. There's reduced rates of crime and delinquency among these children. These benefits are lifelong, and the economic data suggest minimally that the benefit is at least an investment of, or a, a return of $7 for minimally $1 that's invested. And some studies suggest the economic advantage is even greater. Many leading economics have a, econom, economists have affirmed this finding and have extended its implications to think more broadly about the economic arbitrage or the social arbitrage of early childhood education. You know, there was a piece of research that came out just a few months ago about the sustainability of the Head Start program, one of the largest, probably the largest early education program in the United States. And one of the findings of that study is that there is a so-called fade out effect. By the time children get to third grade, those gains that the children make in the early education program and Head Start tend to fade or dissipate. They regress towards the mean, if you will, in a statistical sense. And there's been a lot of criticism of Head Start about that. I think what that data really suggests to us, that children who are going to a high quality early education program, then go into a poor quality elementary program, and the gains aren't sustained. The fade out effect the fade out effect in Head Start is not about fading out the gains of Head Start. It's, not, it's about not taking advantage of the gains that those children's made in Head Start. And that's what we need to do in this country. That's what we need to do not only in the United States but around the world. We have to catapult the gains that children receive in a high quality early education and we need to accelerate those gains as they move into other parts of their education because quality matters and quality costs. When we speak about readiness, and I, I, I speak about the readiness gap. I talked about the readiness gap earlier. Let me talk a little bit more about how I see that. I see the readiness gap as not being the, a problem with the children who are going to school not ready to succeed. I see the problem in that the school is not ready to help the child to succeed. School readiness, in my view, school readiness is not only about getting children ready for school. School readiness is about getting schools ready for children. And that's why conferences like this are so important. Because what you're thinking about, what you're talking about, what you're learning and interacting with each other about is how to enable our schools to be ready to meet the very, very widely diverse needs of all of our children. Funding is indeed a very challenging issue. We're sitting here in the state of Michigan where funding probably is as challenging, if not more challenging, than any state in the country, than any place in the United States. When we think about what's happening in Europe and Asia and the collapse of some of the uh, Euro-based economies in, in Greece and Spain and we see cuts in education. I was told this morning that 191 teachers were laid off in Ann Arbor recently. 15,000 teachers will be laid off this year in New York State alone. We need to pay attention to children with challenging behaviors. You know, the greatest rate of expulsion of any period of time in a child's educational experience, the greatest period of risk they have to be expelled from school is in the preschool environment. The greatest period of risk that they'll be expelled from school is below the age of five. The reason for that is that we haven't prepared ourselves to deal with this breadth of behavior, with the challenges associated with the breadth of behavior in development.